hello and a very big and warm welcome to today's Standing Together. It's wonderful to be able to spend the next half an hour talking to you, our God TV viewers around the world. So thank you so much for joining us today. We are going to be having at the end of this program, don't forget our very special time of prayer for all of you around the world. So if you do have a prayer request or a need, there is a number on your screen and one of the call teams will be able to pick up the phone and pray with you and stand in agreement for your need. We see some fantastic testimonies here at God TV. We believe that God is alive, he is active and he bends his ear to listen to our prayers and our needs. So do go to the number on your screen or go to god.tv forward slash prayer. Now here at God TV, we do stand for three pillars, souls, Israel, and revival. Yes, sir, we say to the call of God TV on our lives. And those three pillars really do encompass so much of the kingdom work. One of those areas that we're going to be talking about today in a little bit more detail is this whole area that sometimes we shy away from as Christians because it's a bit painful to be speaking about. But we're going to be talking about persecution today. What does the Bible say about persecution? How do we prepare our hearts for what is to come and what is already happening? And how do we pray for our brothers and sisters around the world who are in some of the most persecuted regions that we have ever seen? Now I'm joined today by my very own pastor, Pastor Matt Timms from Wave House Church in Newquay, and we're going to be going over this whole big subject. So thank you so much, Matt, for coming and joining us today. Like this is a topic that is so close to my heart. Um, it's one that I've been kind of uh, really uh, engrossed in and looking at for quite a while now. Um, I, I don't think we can ever, as Christians, um, fail to be moved by some of the things that we see around the world happening to our brothers and sisters who are in those extreme persecuted regions. Yeah. You know, what we're seeing in Afghanistan, what we're seeing in the Middle East and Asia and, and in Nigeria, China, um, and even in, in Russia and places like that. It's, it's quite heartbreaking. But I really love it if you could just come, you know, you've got a fantastic grip on the word of God um, and you're always so insightful into what it has to say about different areas of, of, of uh, what the Lord is bringing to us. What does the Bible say is persecution and what are we as Christians to expect? That is a great question, Emma. And you know what? Jesus uh, himself had, had much to say on this. There was a conversation that I really felt led to, actually, which is the, the Olivet Discourse, yeah. when the disciples are, are, are kind of asking uh, Jesus these two questions. You know, what is the sign of your coming and what will be the end of the age? Do you know what I mean? And, 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 and I think Jesus then goes into this whole dialogue. You know, you can expect wars, rumours of wars. We're seeing that now. Uh, famines, we're seeing that now. Earthquakes. You know, there's so many of them happening, pestilences. Uh, and then he goes on and he says in Matthew uh, 24, verse 9, um, after all of these sort of birth pains that we're seeing in the world right now, he says, and then you will be handed over to be persecuted and to be put to death. Whoa, that's quite, yeah. whoa, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute, it doesn't sound very nice. I didn't sign up for that one, Jesus. Yeah. He says, and you will be hated by all nations mm. because of me. Now think about that. This wasn't just something then that was happening to those people at that time. Yeah. But this is something that Jesus is, is talking about here, a, a global persecution mm. that will be happening in the nations around the world because of him. And he goes on to say, at that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. He's there talking about the great falling away that will happen at the end of the age, yeah. uh, where people will just go, well, that's just too much for me. I can't cope with that kind of persecution. Mm. It would be way quicker, easier for me just to, just to stay out of that. Uh, and he says, many false prophets will appear and deceive many. There's talking about the deception. Uh, and because of the wickedness, the love of, of, of uh, most will grow cold. But he who stands firm to the end <laughs> will be saved. And of course, he goes on to say, and this gospel of the kingdom yeah. will be preached to the whole earth. And then the end shall come. So Amen. persecution is one of those things that actually as Christians mm. and particularly as we see things unfolding in the world and mm. we're approaching the day of the Lord when he will return. Unfortunately, persecution is one of those things that we're just going to have to get our heads around 
um, and expect even here in the comfortable west yeah yeah it's it is really sobering is it when you when you take that piece of scripture and you know we like to read that he who endures to the end you know will will uh, have eternal glory you know, that's a comforting scripture, right? But all of that that comes before it and all of those who will fall away in that great falling away, how can we make sure that we are not one of those, that we are one of those that, that endures all the way to the end, even if it goes to the extreme end? Like we see so many, don't we? So many brave, brave brothers and sisters around the world suffering that extreme persecution unto death and torture. Like if it, it goes from one, one, one kind of extreme on one end is you will be hated. So you lose a friend or you, you lose family members, which I think, you know, we're probably all at some point in our walk with Jesus lost a friend because of our faith or lost a family member who no longer wants to speak to us or be in relationship with us. You know, that's quite a reality, I think, for most Christians. Yeah. But if we believe that we are in the end of times and if we believe that the scriptures and this Olivet Discourse is true. How do we put our feet on the rock of Jesus and say, you above all things, I will make a stand for no matter what? Yeah, that's a great, a great question. And the only thing I could turn us to is, is the word of God. <laughs> Amen. Because that's oh, the only, that's it's the only thing that's going to that's <laughs> sustain us. <laughs> the only thing is going to sustain us. The only thing that's going to carry us through uh, this season is going to be the word of God. And you know what? Jesus, uh, he, he, he doesn't promise us an easy life. No. He doesn't say to me, come to me and I'll make all of your problems go away. I'm going to give you a nice, comfortable life. I'm going to give you, you know, a big house. And he doesn't promise us that material blessings mm. he says if, if you pick up your cross and, and follow me and in yeah. fact you know the bible talks a lot put the paul talks a lot about sharing in the mm. sufferings of christ and that's one of the subjects that we don't really like to talk about in church very much is the yeah. fact that as christians we will suffer for the cause and the name of christ and you're, yeah. you're right to say, so how does one then sustain ourselves through those things mm. and of course if you jump over to your bibles to matthew 25 which comes after matthew 24 really? Uh, yeah, he does. And Jesus tells this story um, and he, like, he likens his second coming, the coming of Christ, to a great wedding feast. And that's what we're being prepared for. Amen. And he, he says that there's five wise virgins and mm. five foolish virgins. And this is a message here for the church. This is a, a serious message for the church yep. because it means that some of us are going to be uh, unprepared for his return. Remember, we're not looking for uh, Antichrist to come on the scene. We're not preparing for that. We're preparing ourselves for the return of our bridegroom king. He is coming back for a bright and glorious bride Amen. who will come through the, the end time persecution. Mm. And the only way that we can do that is by ensuring, I believe, that we have got enough oil in our lamps. Yeah. And that oil that Jesus is speaking about there is the oil of intimacy. Yeah, yeah. And you can't circumnavigate that. You can't yeah. go down to the shops to buy it. You can't buy it from Aldi. You can't mm. buy it from any of these supermarkets. You can only get that oil from burning in the secret place yeah. by getting alone with Jesus and burning for him in the place of prayer and, and worship and, and, and not forsaking the things that he tells us to do in his word. So not forsaking the gathering together of the, of the saints, of being in community with others the importance of, of, of being with your brothers and sisters. Mm. And, you know, in the persecuted parts of the world, that's really difficult. Yeah. You know, if I'm in Iran right now, that's good. You know, that's going to look like gathering with one or two in secret. Yeah. But the Bible says, let us for, not forsake meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but all the more as you see the day approaching. So we must do that individually mm. and we must do that corporately. Yeah, no, it's so good. It's so good. And you know, it's, it, it is such a challenging uh, piece of scripture. I love this piece of scripture and we always kind of come back to it when we're talking about end times, we're talking about what is to come because um, Jesus, you know, himself paints that really clear picture about um, all of these things that we are to expect to prepare our hearts. But you're so right, that place of intimacy with the Lord, that place where it's just you and him is one of those places that we sometimes forget But he himself used to take himself off out of ministry and go and spend time with his father. Yeah. And I think we get so caught up in works and doing and being and constant kind of uh, going yeah. that we forget sometimes and we slip into those seasons of 
not spending that time with Jesus. And I always come back to um, that, that wonderful story um, after Jesus comes back, after um, he, he is kind of um, arisen from the grave and he meets there with the disciples on the beach and he tells them to go back out and throw in the net again on the other side. And they're not really even too sure who he is, but they go and do it and they catch these 153 fish and they're caught up in the miracle and the wonder of it. But actually, what's he doing? He's there on the beach preparing breakfast for them, preparing to spend time with them. Yeah. And actually, he doesn't really mention the miracle that has just occurred of these 153 fish. He's there with them by the barbecue, having that fish and having that bread. And I think it's so important, isn't it, Matt, to, to get into those places of intimacy. Like we're, we're in this, uh, you, you, you remind me of the, of the Jewish word. What year is it we're in at the moment? We are, it's the Shemitah year. <laughs> there you go. And the what does that mean? The Shemitah is basically, it's the seventh year. So there's, there's God works in cycles. And, yeah. he, and so he has a seven year cycle. And on the seventh year, the Israelites were, were told when they entered the promised land that they were to, they were to actually let the land lay fallow. Yeah. Uh, you know, in, in, in Leviticus 25, you can read all about that. Um, <laughs> but it's literally, it actually means to, to, to to let to have a rest and we we need to find ourselves in that place of rest as you rightly said Jesus often took himself uh, off to pray even in the carnage you know Mark 1 you know when when revival was breaking out in Capernaum yeah. and, and everyone's looking for Jesus you know all these miracles have taken <laughs> place and yet we see that Jesus took himself off to a solitary place yeah. where he spent time alone with the father and that's where he was renewed that's where he was restored mm. that's where the father gave him his strategy for the next season and you know yes Jesus was going to face all kinds of trouble and hardships and famines and mm. all of those things awaited him yet he was able to persevere through those things yeah. because he had the oil of intimacy because he was walking mm. tightly with the father that's why Jesus says I only do what I see my father, father doing do. yeah and that's the only thing that's going to sustain us through the troubles of this yeah. world and it's amazing isn't it? because sometimes we get so caught up with wanting to see the miracles, so caught up with wanting to see the salvation and the signs and wonders and wanting to hear those, you know, beautiful prophetic words and all of those things are, are great parts of being a Christian. But actually what it all comes down to is Jesus is much more interested in coming back to us at that barbecue, spending time with us and just having that intimacy. And I think out of that then, you'll see then naturally, won't you, the signs, the wonders, Come the miracles on. and all yeah. those things. Yeah. Um, you know, we've got a fantastic uh, testimony coming up from you now all the way from Australia. And we're going to be back with Matt right after this. Hi, I'm Stella. I'm from Sydney, Australia. Uh, I was born in Iraq and we moved to Iran when I was six months old during the war. I grew up in Iran and when I was 11, we migrated to Australia. We always thank God to be in this country, like escaping the war. Because we were Orthodox, we get persecuted there. There was something inside of me that was empty. Mostly I didn't read the Bible because the priest would read the Bible for us and we would just listen to him. I didn't even open the Bible because the word came from the priest and we didn't need to read it ourselves. We had a lot of like sacrifices that we made to the saints. If you have sins, well, you don't enter the church. If you haven't been baptized, you cannot take communion. In a way, you're very self-righteous. I was trying to find God to know like who he is. I used to like fear him. I thought like he's, he's got a scale of seeing, am I good or bad? And depending whether the scale is good or bad, that would determine if I'll go to heaven or hell. So when my daughter was born, I went through a very rough time. I went through like suicidal thoughts, depression and anxiety. I went to Iran for visiting family and friends. And there I was watching TV, they had satellite dishes. And I was just channel surfing, looking at all these <laughs> different channels. And I came across God TV. I thought, I'll click on this channel and see what I'll see. And it was Pastor Creflo Dollar who was preaching. 
whatever questions I had, he was answering me. I thought, how does he know all this about me? How, how is he answering my questions? Like, does he know me? It was on that day that I gave my life to Christ and I became a born again Christian watching God TV. It was the first time in my life that I felt so free and he pulled me out of that pit and I've become like a conqueror in Christ. It's just amazing what God has done for me. Oh, I will never tire of hearing all of the testimonies that we get here at God TV about how people come to know Jesus just by switching on the television, looking at their phones or their laptops, going onto one of our Facebook pages or reading um, something of the, the daily emails that get sent around or watching a fantastic program by us or one of our partner ministries. You know, God can use it all. God really works through media as well to, to send out his hope and his word. And, you know, in that Olivet Discourse there at the end, it talks about, doesn't it, or in the middle there somewhere, about how um, we have to go into all of the nations and make disciples and then the end will come. Yeah. And I always find that really uh, encouraging that actually the world events don't actually rely on the enemy at all. They rely on the church to go out and spread the word in all of the nations. Um, and that's what we do here at God TV, isn't it, Matt? Come on. Yes, <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, it yeah. really is. Um, so we were talking um, before the programme and something as really exciting is going to be happening soon in Newquay that we um, are so, so blessed by. Uh, do you want to go into a little bit about the story about the Afghan refugees. Oh, sorry. Um, yes, it is the Afghan, Afghan refugees. Afghan, that's yeah. it, yeah. Sorry. So um, we were, I was approached by the mayor of Newquay. Yeah. Um, who came to me and said, Matt, we've got this situation where we've been approached by this organisation that want to house some refugees here in Newquay. Mm. And we're, uh, if, we, if they come here, would you as a local church be able to help and support them sort of practically and mm. spiritually? And we were just like, yes, of course, we will do absolutely anything that we can. I love this about our church. Yeah, because he, he, I mean, he said, he said that these guys are actually Christians. Yeah. And the reason why they're all sort of 16 to 17 year olds. Wow. And the reason why they're, they're coming is that their, their families have been, they were killed. You know, right. their families have been killed. And these, these people were at risk mm. of being killed because of their faith in Christ. Um, and I, I said to the mayor, I said, look, if you if you open up this door, I yeah. said, you're, I guarantee you're, you're, you're opening up Nuki to be blessed. Amazing. Uh, because, you know, Jesus says, if you do to the least of these, yeah. as if you're doing it to me. So you might not even know that you're doing this, but you're actually setting up Nuki to be blessed because mm. you're opening up and you're serving and blessing and looking after his people. Yeah. And that's such... You know, it's such a tragic story, isn't it? Um, you know, those those poor people, they're going from a place that is, is war-torn and where they've been severely persecuted and, and, and seen such atrocities um, happening to their direct family members before their eyes. But, you know, they're going from that place into Nuki, which couldn't be more different to Afghanistan, couldn't be more different to where they've come from uh, culturally, language-wise. But we know that if we are living in the end times, there are going to be more and more dispersed populations, more uh, people going from one country to another who are going to be in dire need of help. How can we as church step up and be welcoming, be the home, the true hands and feet of Jesus Christ and show love uh, to these people who have lost everything? Yeah. Do you know what? I think we're, we're going to have to create safe places for people to come mm. um, right across the United Kingdom. I, I believe the church now, need, we need to get out, out of our Western mindset, which is yeah. this is my house, this is my castle, um, this is my protected space. Mm. And actually, if we genuinely want to get back to a, a New Testament model of church, you know, when I read the book of Acts, mm. uh, I, read the, I read a bunch of guys that literally, put, they sold everything. I mean, they sold their houses, they sold their businesses, is they, and they chucked it all in the middle. They shared their resources yeah. with everyone who had need. That's the kind of kingdom family. And it's, I think it's a global kingdom family. You know, we need to be a people that yeah. open up our doors, open up our homes, open up our resources to all and everyone, especially um, our brothers and sisters around the world who are, are escaping terrible regimes that mm -hmm. are seeking to kill kill Christians and yeah. you know we the people of God need to be opening our homes and our lives up and welcome mm -hmm. them welcome them in 
Well, I really look forward, actually, um, maybe in a few months' time when we've had a chance to welcome uh, those young people uh, that you can come back and just share the testimonies of what God is, is doing in their lives because I'm sure that it's going to impact us as a church family as well in extraordinary ways. And, um, yeah, what a blessing and a privilege to be able to do that. It's amazing. Um, God TV family, we have got now coming up for you our very special time of prayer. Now, don't forget, we have got um, people on the prayer lines all around the world. So go to the number on your screen if you do need prayer or go to God.tv forward slash prayer. Now, Matt, we have, I'm not kidding you, hundreds of thousands of prayer requests yeah. from people all around the world. Um, we get... Um, from Afghanistan, from Pakistan, from India, from Asia, US, UK, you name it, uh, we get, uh, and you say it's a global family and it really comes home and I check the prayer inbox uh, each and every day, how global our family really, really is. And it's, it's such an amazing privilege. But we've got Brad here in the US. Brad, praying for his housing situation, in danger of being evicted, and this is causing him anxiety. We've got Susan in the UK. Susan just found out that her friend has passed away. We're praying for her in her grief, for peace and comfort to surround her. Selma in the UK, pray for a granddaughter who is pregnant with twins, um, praying for a healthy pregnancy and for those twins to be born well. Joshua in Canada, please pray for healing of my diabetes. And um, Shalmon in India, please pray for restoration of my marriage. My wife and I are living apart. Pray we will come back together and have a strong marriage. Would you just generally, Matt, with your pastor's heart, just pray out for our God TV family? Yeah, Father in heaven, I just I thank you that you are the Lord God, maker of heaven and earth. Lord, I thank you that the earth is your footstool. I thank you, Lord, that you have the ultimate final authority on all things. And we just bring before you today, Lord, all of the needs of the God TV family right across the world and all those that have uh, sent their prayer requests in. Lord, you know every single need, you know every single person. And God, I thank you that your word declares that you are more than able to meet all of our needs according to your glorious riches and so God I just pray Lord whether that need is for healing whether that need is for, is for financial breakthrough Lord whether that's for for for, 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 for meeting them in a place of, of grief and pain Lord I just pray that you bring your healing and your restorative touch to the lives of all of the viewers in the name of Jesus I pray this prayer amen 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 um, Matt, we've got a few minutes left and what I would really, really love for you to do, I know you've got a great heart for evangelism. You want to see all the lives saved and uh, salvations happen. Now you've got a unique opportunity right here to be speaking to people all across the world. And who knows, there might be some people in some of those persecuted regions that we're talking about right now for the very first time who are hearing about the love of Jesus. Would you just straight into that camera there, give us a salvation call? Come on. OK, well, this is the thing. Uh, the Bible says this, that God is like a father who has lost his kids. Uh, and you know what? For me, in my own personal journey, I was lost. I was lost in the things of this world. Um, I, I was far from God, but God reached in and he grabbed my heart and he pulled me back into a relationship with, with himself. And you know what? Maybe you feel a little bit lost. Maybe you've tuned into this, fa into this program and you're thinking, I, 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 I can't make sense of this world around me. Well, you know what? God loves you and he's in pursuit of you today. And he's calling you back into a relationship with him through Jesus. Jesus didn't die on the cross so that you can have a great relationship relationship or warm fuzzy feelings in your life he came to restore a relationship that was broken between you uh, a sinner and a perfect holy God and today I just want to pray if that's you today and you know that God is arresting your heart then please respond don't harden your heart to him but soften your heart because his spirit is here and he's calling you back into a relationship with him so father in the name of Jesus I just pray Lord for those that are tuned in today that are far from you I thank you Jesus that you came to bridge the great divide that you came Lord to give us life and life in all its fullness mm -hmm. and I just pray right now for those lost sheep of yours I pray that they would hear the call of the good shepherd today calling them back into a relationship with the father 
Father. And I pray your blessing uh, upon their lives as they come back to you right now in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, that there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, that all guilt has gone, all shame has gone, and that, Lord, you make us brand spanking new from the inside out. Mm. The Bible says this, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come. Receive this new life, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm, amen, amen. And if you maybe just gave your life to Jesus there or you want to know a little bit more about what it is to be a Christian, then we do have a page on the God TV website. Go to god.tv forward slash new believer and you will be able to get lots, lots of information there about what it means to be a Christian and get lots of answers to maybe some of your questions. Matt, I've had such a lovely time here with you today. I know it's been a really difficult, difficult and gnarly subject, but it is so important that we do get into these subjects as Christians and prepare our hearts for the times to come. So thank you for, for sharing the word of God with us today. How can we as a God TV family be praying for you and for Sally and for our beautiful church family at Wave House? You know, we are just so thrilled to partner with God TV. And, you know, as a local church in the UK, we're so privileged with this partnership and it's great for you to pray with us as well. We're so hungry for revival. Yes, is amen. What we, want. We, we need God to move in this nation. And I think if we could pray for anything right now, it was that the church of Jesus Christ, every believer, everyone everywhere, fully activated in who they are in God, with the fire of God, uh, being salt and light in their communities. Mm. That's how we need to be praying right now because nothing short of revival is gonna turn this nation round. Amen, amen. And I think, you know, it's one of the pillars there at God TV, Souls Israel Revival. We wanna see those moves of God happen. We're with ever more frequency and ever more power. And, you know, just want to encourage you all at home, do keep on praying for your communities. Pray for those around you. You know, look at your sphere of influence. You might have some people in the workplace that you might not have prayed for. You might have some people on the streets as you're walking around that you might not have had the opportunity to pray for. But just listen to the Holy Spirit. See where he guides you. You know, evangelism doesn't have to be a big and, and scary word. It is literally just sharing what God has put in our hearts about his love for others. So we just pray, Lord, break our hearts for what breaks yours and help us to have ears that are faithful to hear and, and eyes which are faithful to see the needs of those around us. And, you know, if you've got a testimony to share with us, if you've got anything that you want to get in touch with us about here at God TV, go to info at god.tv and we'd love, love, love to hear from you. Well, Matt, it's been lovely to share some time with you today. Um, all the blessings to Wave House Church in Newquay. And thank you all at home for coming and standing together with us today. Until we see you again here on Standing Together at God TV. Shalom. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Let us know how it impacted you. Send your prayer request to god.tv forward slash prayer today.